Hi, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to edit uh, daytime landscape photos. I think first, first and foremost really you need to talk about how you actually took the pictures. I've got three pictures I took when I was on holiday last year in Norfolk. I think one of the difficulties that you will find is when you're taking pictures during the daytime is the lighting itself. It tends to be quite harsh simply because the sun is way way bright and that then creates a massive contrast between you know your foreground and your background and the sky themselves one way to overcome that is you know do like what the professionals do they turn their pictures one to get the ideal sort of lighting that's usually sunrises and sunsets the problem is you know with professionals they're getting paid for that so they've got the time in the world and when, when they go out to take pictures usually that's what their main aim really is to take that picture so they can plan they've got the patience they can wait for the right moment to take, uh, to actually take the picture compared to somebody like myself an amateur i think one of the things that happens is taking the picture tends to be your secondary aim like in this case here i was on holiday which was the my main aim we were going out for a walk so it wasn't just me it was uh you know working with others as well they haven't got the time to wait to say for example i mean i think when i took this picture it was around maybe 2 2 2 30. it was summer which means the sunset would have been around maybe 7 30 8 pm so i would have had to wait for hours for the sun to go down it's not worth my time because i'm not getting paid for it. so in the end i just had to take the pictures and move on so to overcome that harsh lighting i think the technique that i use to take this picture is it's called bracketing technique all it means really is uh, you tend to take multiple photos in this case i took three but they all have different exposure settings i think the first one is underexposed the second one is balanced and then the third one is overexposed and what you then do with those pictures is what i'm going to show you right now when you look at this one here the top one that's the one which is well balanced the one at the bottom left is the one which we uh, which is underexposed and when you look at this one here which is on your right is the one which is overexposed i think i'll open that one for you to have a, uh, a good look i think when you look at the skies here you've got sort of this bit here which there is a bit of detail in the clouds but that's only because this is overexposed i mean these clouds when you were looking at it looking at uh, looking at them they were quite dark signifying that a storm was coming and yeah it did come eventually here this is where you had the breakaway sun which was coming out and this is why it's so so bright but you did have some clouds in here you did have some rays as well coming out but because it's overexposed you don't see them at all but when you look at the foreground here you can see that it's reasonably clear and that's showing the different sort of tones of this picture and that actually brings me to another way of taking your pictures which is i think the best way to take your pictures is to take them in the raw format because if you take them in take them in your jpeg format usually i think this is what you're going to end up with most of that dynamic range is going to be lost and you will not be able to sort of bring back any details in like this area here and like this area which are you know the shadows here you won't be able to bring bring back those uh, details that you'll be able to bring out if you take your pictures in a raw format all these uh, three pictures I took them in raw format and you're going to see what i'm talking about as i'm editing them I think what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to open this one here. So that's going to open the camera roll. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to go crazy in terms of uh, editing really. What I'm going to do is just do the profile corrections. Go here, I'm just going to do white balance, set it to auto. I'm going to do auto here as well and see what comes out. You see, because this was taken in raw format, can you see all the details that I immediately gained? It's just awesome. Even in the clouds here as well, the details are all so, sort of starting to come out. You can see the rays much, much better as well. I think I'm just going to bring up my highlights even down. 
so that I can bring more details out of the clouds. I think one of the things that I'm going to do really is to add a graduated filter onto the clouds. I'm going to darken them a little bit. Yeah, it's all dark. It's all dark here. And I'm going to dehaze as well. Yeah, that's it. And then I'm going to apply my graduated filter like that. And can you see the amount of details which has already come out? I mean, obviously here you can see that this is still quite overexposed in these areas here. But that's not a problem. What I'm going to do now is click done. And then I'm going to go back again to bridge. I'm going to go to this picture that I've just done all those uh, adjustments. I'm going to then copy the develop settings of your settings and then I'm gonna to go to the to the rest of the pictures I'm gonna paste those settings like that now if you look at the one which was underexposed I think when you look at the clouds here you can see all the details have been clawed back obviously here is still quite quite dark isn't it and when you go back to the one at the bottom, which was overexposed, yes, the, uh, the skies are still quite overexposed. You know, you've lost all the details on the clouds here, but you have regained most of the details in the foreground here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to highlight all the three pictures, right click and then say open in camera roll. When it does that, you come up to this uh, first picture here, right click again, and then select all. And when you've done that, you right click again. And this time I'm gonna choose merge to HDR. It's gonna take its time, depending on how fast your computer is. Yeah, it will take a little bit of time. I think in my case here, I've got Photoshop running, I've got Bridge running, and I've also got OBS running. So yeah, a lot of resources are being consumed all at the same time. Yeah, this is my preview, and I quite like what I'm seeing now. So I'm just gonna press Merge, and it's gonna ask me to save, which I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm just gonna save it where it is, you know, in the same folder. Again, it's going to take a little bit of time. But what you're going to notice here, yeah, I've got my final HDR, which is also saved in uh, raw format, which is actually quite good, which means you can, you know, do further sort of adjustments to it if you want. In this case, I don't know, I think I might just lower my highlights down to see if I can get a little bit of detail in the clouds. Yeah, I think I'm actually quite happy with that. Compare that with the original three pictures. Look at this one here. You can tell the difference, can't you? I mean, look at the underexposed one here, no details in the foreground here. And you look at the overexposed here, no details at all here in the sky, especially here when the sun's sticking out. When you look at this one, I think you've got details here in the duck clouds page. You've got details here where the sun is sticking out. You can actually see the rays coming out as well. And you've got so much details here in the uh, in the foreground as well so overall all in all i'm actually hit with this shot really i think after i've done that i would have normally taken some more time really to fine tune my edits but for this video i'm gonna open this one in photoshop straight away yeah, it's a bit slower because you know you've got these three other software running in the background what I'm going to do really first and foremost is just to straighten my horizon. It's fairly straight. Yeah, didn't need much really. I'm not really satisfied with this shot already. But what I'm going to do next is maybe do a little more further adjustments in uh, Lumina 4. What I want to do in Lumina 4 is um, I sort of enhance the sun rays. 
and also I'm just gonna use the power of LuminaForce AI to do some quick sort of um, AI adjustments to the photo and see what you know it comes up with. So there you are. I've got my picture. Well, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is use the AI image enhancer. I'm gonna click on that. Oh god, I love that. I mean, can you see the foliage? The, the brightness, the vibrance, and the saturations that it's put into the foliage as well. The sky as well. You know, you've got more greys here, and you've got some blues here in the open skies as well. To me, I think it's more realistic, but somebody else might think that it's oversaturated. But that's sort of a uh, individual sort of personal test, isn't it? What I really want to show you guys is uh, this tab here. If you click on this, this one here. You then got this sun rays tab here and what you need to do first of all is uh, place your sun center which has been placed here I think when you're looking when you're looking at the sun rays you know they're coming out this way and uh, that way and this way so that actually means maybe the sun is somewhere around here so this is where I'm gonna put my sun it doesn't have to be Accurate. And now what you can do is you can choose the amount of sun rays that you want. I think I'm going to go with that amount. But the problem I've got now is you've got the sun rays kind of sticking out here as well where the clouds are quite dense. So really that's not realistic. You know the sun shouldn't be sticking out here at all. But that can easily be adjusted by you just editing the mask, taking a brush. And where am I? I think I'm on erase opacity. Should I increase that way, way high? And all you want to do is yes, you want to paint. So you take them out here in the clouds, take them all out in the clouds, and then click that and bring them up here. So what you can then do is click this button here, before, after, before, after, before, after, and just look around to see where maybe you have missed when it comes to erasing those uh, rays. I think that's fairly okay, to be honest. You can go ahead and adjust amount here you don't want to overdo it really that's the that's the thing isn't it that's the key so i don't want the rays to be too much to the point that they look unnatural but at the same time i want them to be you know invisible to anybody who sees them yeah i think that's actually quite good so once that's all finished just press done and then apply that will take you back to photoshop i think that's one of the good things uh, about you know working with lumina 4 it's actually quite quite fast i know you can do all these uh, sort of adjustments uh, adjusting the sun rays as well adding them on with photoshop but what i've noticed is it tends to be time consuming it also a little bit complex so there is a bit of a learning curve into doing that as well voila that's my picture um yeah the sun the sun rays are looking quite nice actually i think my picture is actually finished one of the things that you can actually do to enhance it even more is maybe to crop it what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and crop it from top left hand side coming down here to my niece yeah i think that's actually quite good here and then i'll click yes have a look at that i think i'll use that as my final picture you know you've got your sun rays in the sky on your bottom you know sort of top left hand corner and i've got my niece at the bottom is uh as well nearly in the center You've got this lovely bush here on your right hand side. I think all in all it's actually quite well composed shot. And this is a daytime photo, which if I had taken it as a JPEG picture, it would have been very, very difficult to get all these details back. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, I would really much appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. 
and if you would also subscribe to my channel okay until next time take care